ever wondered if you were to trust somebody with your deepest secrets? There comes a time in life whereby trusting somebody can become a very challenging thing. Amen. Where you just don't know how that person's going to react if you were to open up to them with the secrets that you're having or the troubles that you're having. You just don't know how the person will look at you after they find out about that secret that you were holding in your heart. Amen. But God encourages us to trust Him. His word tells us, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. The truth of the matter is man today can judge you because you've come to trust them with a certain problem that you have. You may be having an issue in your marriage or with your finances or with your ministry or whatever the case may be. After you open up to that person, maybe that person had a high esteem of you, but after you've spoken to them, they're like, ah, yebe, kutu. Ayaka wa zosenga nga wambongo anini. Look at this guy. But God never changes his opinion about you, no matter what it is that you are going through. Amen. So, it is imperative. When you look at the life of Abraham, it was totally dependent. I mean, Abraham trusted God so much that the Bible even goes on to call him the father of faith. <laughs> Think about that for a second. You know, he trusted God so much that he started, they called him the father of faith. And the Bible, and throughout the Bible, it is, that has been known as his name. Amen. And so, with this, people can make mistakes. Okay, people can let you down, um, and especially when you're putting your trust in others, it takes a great courage from you because people are not reliable. This evening, I just want to encourage you that the only reliable source of your help is God. Only God. No matter who the person it is that you put in your trust in, one way or another, they will let you down. No matter who it is they will let you down but God never lets you down and God is never late <laughs> he's always on time no matter what it seems like you know there are some times when you could be facing a little issue and you're trusting God but you're also trusting on people you know you're trying to mix the two you become a hybrid you see like cars these days hybrid cars so you're like a hybrid you're like I'm trusting God I'm trusting people you know, people can let you down. Or at the time it might seem like God is taking too long, so let me run to people to try and speed up the process. But I want to encourage you, don't do that. No matter how difficult it is that you're going through, keep on trusting in God. Amen. He knows the right time. He knows the perfect time that He's gonna show up and you're gonna receive your justification through the things that you are going through. Amen. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. Praise Jesus. Yes. Okay. So when you learn to trust the Lord in all circumstances, even if there's war, you learn to trust in Him. And you're like, no, Lord. Despite the war, my family and I will be preserved. Despite the sicknesses and diseases, my, my, my friends, my church will be preserved. Despite the uprising in the church and Pastor Abima or whatever the case may be, I'm trusting in you that my church or my community or my home, my family will be protected. When you get to that point and whereby you cut every earthly sources, emphasis, you cut every earthly sources, you're going to notice that there's going to be a certain peace that's going to enter into your heart. A peace which cannot be compared to anything. You know, there's a difference. Today, I'm going to use this example because we all can relate to it, okay? So today you might be in debt. And let's say you need help with your debt. And so you're walking down the road. You're like, who can help me? Who can help me? You prayed, but you're still asking yourself, who can help me? Who can help me? And then miraculously you just bump into Bill Gates you're like oh Bill Gates he's like yeah I'm good <laughs> and so you're like Bill man you know I got issues here like I need cash man you know I'm just it's not working out Bill's like don't worry how much you need he's like, don't even tell me how much you need don't worry I'll sort you out the sense of 
upliftment that you're going to get from Bill Gates just telling you, don't worry. But, and you're going to get the sense of peace, the sense of reassurance. You're like, ah, Bill promised. <laughs> Bill promised. But I want to tell you that God, God is far greater than Bill Gates. And when God promises you, the peace that you receive will be far greater than the peace that you receive than if Bill Gates promised you something. Amen. And you won't understand. You, you, you just, you're just not going to understand where this peace co comes from. His word in John 14, 27 says, My peace I give to you, not as the world gives it, but my peace I give to you. Amen. Amen. So many of us get to the point where we start asking ourselves, does God still speak till this very day? Does God still speak? Or has God been limited to the Bible? What has been written in the Bible, that is it. Does God still speak outside of the Bible, if we can call it that? And the answer is yes, God does still speak. He speaks to you, he speaks to me. Because every single man has a calling in their lives. Every single man, every single woman, every person has a calling in their lives. There are places where God has assigned you to be. Maybe for you, you weren't supposed to be here in Ireland. But you also force it, you also like I have to be here. <laughs> Maybe God spoke to you through a dream, through a vision, through a prophet, through a message. He called you out. He said, go to a land and I will show you where it's going to be. Amen. And that's exactly what he did with Abraham here. Many times God calls us and he says, my daughter, my son, my child, come out. And he will speak to you through a dream. Or he will speak through you through preaching or through a prophet or through feelings. God can also speak through feelings, but you need to have the spirit of discernment to know if this is really God. Amen. And so God can speak to you. In verse 1, God says, the Lord appeared to Abraham. He says, go out from your country, your relatives, and your father's household. When I was reading this chapter, I just felt the spirit of the Lord come upon me and he just overtook me, you know. And I was like, oh my God, what's happening here? Essentially, what God was telling Abraham or what God was doing for Abraham is God was delivering Abraham. God was delivering Abraham. Delivering him from what? We know that Abraham's father was an idolater. God delivered him out of that familiar spirit of idolatry. That's why he told him, he said, come out of your country. Come out of your country. What does that mean? Come out of your country. You see, God does not want you to depend in the world system. The world system is bills, debts, stress, sicknesses, diseases, frustrations, barrenness, strife, jealousy, hatred, all of that stuff. God was calling Abraham out of that. So he was basically delivering Abraham out of these things, out of the world system. And God was telling him, come out of that. Amen. Come out of your country, God was telling Abraham. Come out from your relatives. God wanted Abraham to cut and to break every family ties generational curses God wanted Abraham to so essentially God was delivering him God was delivering him through words he was like come out come out of your country leave your relatives behind so cut every family ties or familiar spirits cut all those ties and your father's household come out of your father's household amen in other words God was telling Abraham leave your father's or don't follow in your father's footsteps I believe it is in Proverbs the word says uh, a, a wise man leaves an inheritance for his children but if you look at what was Tehran going to leave Abraham as an inheritance was what's going to leave him was it going to be something godly or something ungodly if Tehran died he was going to leave Abraham tala bikeko mm. plenty of bikeko bondela nzambe soki anini and all those kind of things but God was telling Abraham come out of your father's house deliverance I sat there and I was like God this is amazing I've never seen this chapter like this 
God was essentially delivering Abraham from these things and he wanted him to transition into the kingdom system amen God wanted Abraham to transition into the kingdom system in the kingdom basically the country come out of your country come out of this world and enter into the kingdom of God amen into the kingdom of God the currency in the kingdom of God is faith here we work with money no money no eat <laughs> in the kingdom of God no faith no eat <laughs> no faith forget it you die in the kingdom of God you live by faith no faith you you just you've got an you've put an embargo on yourself if you do not if you do not have faith amen in the kingdom of God there is no crime there is no sickness there is no poverty there is no lack that is why Abraham God was calling him out of the country and to transition into his kingdom can I get an amen on that one and in the kingdom of God, the devourer is not there. The devourer cannot come and devour your blessings because he has no access into the kingdom of God. Amen. So God was essentially telling Abraham, he said, he was delivering him and not only was he delivering him, but there was a divine transition from one kingdom into another kingdom. Amen. And so we're going to see it later on. If you read all of this, you're going to see how Abraham's life being transformed and being led by God when all of this was happening. God was also essentially telling to Abraham, as I said before, to break the family tie so we can so he cannot worship idols that his father was worshipping. Binzam Binzambi, as Pastor always likes to say it. Amen. <laughs> oh my Lord. The land. You know, God says, um, and then if you read, we're still in verse one here, amen. And God says, and leave your father. He says, go out from your country, your relatives, your father's household, and to the land that I will show you. Amen. So I started wondering to myself, and I was like, Lord, just lead me. What does the land here mean? What is this land here representing? And the land could mean a lot of things. Amen. But certainly the land means the promises of God. You know, the word says, the blessings of the Lord make us rich. If you look at the criteria of a rich man, according to the Bible, land was one of the biggest ones. Amen? Not as in the world system today, whereby they say, you need to have just a lot of money, or you need to have, you are rich in credit. <laughs> rich in credit, but poor in tangible wealth. But here, God was telling Abraham, come out of your father's under your father's tent and transition into my kingdom and I will give you this land basically God was God was promising Abraham after delivering you after setting you free from the system of this world from family ties from your father's household and idolatries I'm going to bless you afterwards then you can inherit the blessings of the kingdom Amen. And the land also represents that when God delivers you, He always starts something new in your life. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to pause there for a second. There is no way here on earth that you can come across God and remain the same. There is just no way. If you used to smoke before, if you encounter the life-changing gospel of God, you'll stop smoking. It might take time, but you will stop smoking. Because deliverance is progressive. And we'll see it here in chapter 12. You're going to see that even though Abraham was delivered from God, it was still progressive with Abraham. Amen? There is no way that you can come across with God and remain the same. Your life has to change. Just look at the life of Jesus. Every single person, and I mean every single person that came across Jesus, except for Jesus, except for him, every single person that met Jesus, their lives were changed. Every sick was healed. Every captive was set free. 
everyone that came across him, their life one way or another changed. And I pray today that the same way that every single person that has met God, their lives were changed, that it be the same with you as well over your life in Jesus' glorious and mighty name. Amen. Right, so deliverance, as again, we are still here, as God was speaking to Abraham about his deliverance, you could see but that also required trust from Abraham. It required faith from Abraham. Amen? Faith in God that God is going to fulfill that which he said. Amen? And God is saying to someone here today that if you trust me, that if you put your faith in me and not into the world system and into him alone, then I will make you a great nation. Then I'm going to make you a great person. Then I'm going to make you have an impact into your society, into your community, into your church, into your family, and into every other thing that you set your mind on. I, God, will make you great and your name great. And your ancestors, your children's children's children are going to speak of you. Amen. Amen. And you will be a blessing. I like what this other says. Oh my God, God is so good. You know, God is so good. <laughs> we just praise him. He says, this is now verse 2, okay? God says, I will make your name great. So that other versions, it says, uh, you will be a blessing unto others, okay? But other versions, like this version that I chose to use today, it says, you will exemplify divine blessings. Think about that. Les Anglais m'ont cassé, j'espère. Yeah? You will exemplify divine blessing. Exemplify. It means, so wherever you go, when people speak of blessings, they will associate your name with it. Everywhere you go. That's what exemplify means. And not just exemplify, but you will exemplify divine blessing. That means it's blessings where it's like, where people were struggling. You, you come, you just walk in. It happens for you. And because you are so blessed that even people around you start taking advantage of the blessing over you. We're going to see it here. Lot is one of them. Amen. <laughs> he was not called out, but he decided to tag along with Abraham and he received some of the blessings. Amen. <laughs> just by trusting God. You will bless those who bless you. Just by trusting God, God will bless those who bless you, I meant to say. Amen. And I like what God says. Just by you trusting Him. Now, this is the benefits of you trusting in God. Amen. If you trust in Him, He will bless those that bless you. If somebody curses you, God says in this version, it says, if anybody takes you lightly, I must curse him. So it's compulsory for God to curse them. You know, brothers and sisters, sometimes we, we sell ourselves too cheaply. We shortchange ourselves. You, you are at the value of 100, but you are selling yourself at the value of 30 or even 20. It's why very often I pray against that spirit of depression, of low self-esteem, because God sees you far greater than what you're seeing yourself. To the point where he's saying, anybody that curses you, I will curse. Not I will curse, but I must curse. It is compulsory. God has obliged himself that for anyone who comes against you, I will curse them. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And yet we see the, spirit, the, the story of Lot here. I like Lot, you know, because Lot, Lot was smart. <laughs> Amen. He was wise, that guy. Lot if I can just read on my notes here, Lot benefited from what the Lord was doing in the life of Abraham. God, I said, he did not call Lot. He called Abraham. But, Abraham, but Lot, just by deciding to follow Abraham, he inherited some of the blessings of Abraham. Some of it spilled over into his life. Amen? And you can see it, if you carry on reading throughout Genesis, you're going to see Lot was blessed as well. 
he had many cattle he had lots of land he had lots of things so all of this was because of the blessings of God and even when it came to the point where God wanted to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah I like what the Bible says um, I like what the Bible says it says God thought of Abraham and therefore he sent his angel first to come and rescue Lot before he can destroy Sodom and Gomorrah amen so this is basically to say your blessing because you are trusting in God your family members are also going to be spared because you trust in God somebody close to you will be saved because you are trusting in God your children maybe they should have ended up being drug addicts or whatever it is that the enemy planned against them but God is going to think of you and your trust that you have in him trust your trust I'm calling it trust faith same thing okay just understand that because you're trusting in him God is gonna say no 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 let me spare her or his children because they trust in me because they believe in me and I am a God who is faithful I'm not a man that I should lie nor a son of man that I should repent amen and so there comes a time when even though God promises us things, things don't go according to plan. Amen? How many of you can relate to that? Where God has promised you something and things just, you start questioning yourself. You start doubting yourself. You're like, oh my God, what is happening here? Nothing is going right. Lord, you promised me this, but I'm seeing the complete opposite of what you promised me. Amen? And that's the same that happened here with Abraham. Can I get an amen on that one? Abraham after God had promised him all these things and he got to the land where he was called to, to be so when he, got, when he got to that land in verse um, 7 it says well let's start from verse 6 it says Abraham traveled through the land as far as the oak tree of Morah of Shechemi at the time the Canaanites were there the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him verse, this is now verse 7 your descendants I will give this land so Abraham built an altar on that land amen let's jump to verse 10 now it says there was a famine in the land this is Genesis 12 10 amen it says there was a famine in the land so Abraham went down into Egypt I want to encourage I want to remind somebody tonight being a Christian or being a believer does not necessarily mean that you will not have problems in your life I think we need to grow spiritually and we need to understand that being a Christian does not mean everything's gonna be green pastures spring waters honey and milk flowing 24 7 no problems at all also always laughing always happy no being a Christian sometimes you will have to walk through fire but I thank God that as you're walking through fire, you're also being purified. Just like gold. You know gold. For gold to be as shiny as it is, it needs to go through fire. It is only when it goes through fire, that's when the value of gold increases as much as it increases. When gold goes through fire, that is when it becomes attractive to the human eye. Amen. And that's when gold becomes more pleasing. So it's the same way with you and I. Abraham here he got a famine and very often when trouble comes we forget about the promises of God I know the Bible does not strictly uh, stipulate it here but I believe that Abraham also began to doubt what God had promised him because if he didn't doubt I don't think Abraham was gonna go to Egypt amen I don't think he was gonna go to Egypt but because there was a famine on the land Abraham went to Egypt for a while and the Bible says in verse 10 it says um, there was famine on the land so Abraham went down to Egypt to stay for a while because the famine was severe amen it does not mean if God gave you a promise then trouble will not come in fact when God gives you a promise the devil is going to try his best for you to miss the promise of God to miss that blessing of God but it is up to you and I to remain vigilant through prayer through meditation and through every other form 
of maintaining that relationship with God so that you do not miss your blessings. Amen. And so the famine on the land, I started thinking to myself, I'm like, Lord, why was there famine on the land? You know, sometimes you receive a promise from God and things don't go according to plan. And you ask yourself, God, why did this happen? Can so is somebody relating? And you ask yourself, why did this happen? It's the same way that I ask myself. I'm like, Lord, you called Abraham and yet there was a famine. Why did that happen? And I felt the Spirit of the Lord lead me to Genesis 13, 5 and 6. Can we just go there very quickly? I think we're going to find an answer to that. Amen? Genesis 13, verse 5 and 6. The Word of God says, Now Lot, who was traveling with Abraham, also had flocks, herds, and tents. But the land, this land here is the land where God promised Abraham. He said, I will give it to you. It says, but the land could not support them while they were living side by side because their possessions were so great. They were not able to live alongside one another. There's your answer to your question. Why do sometimes things happen to us even though God has promised us? I believe when God promises you, there are steps. He calls you out of your land and he tells you, the transition. You remember that we spoke about the transition? You come out from one kingdom into another kingdom. As you're transitioning, you cannot bring things from this kingdom into this kingdom. Lot was from that kingdom in this context. The famine for me, I believe, was on this land because Lot was there with Abraham as well. It got to the point whereby Abraham had to cut that relationship with Lot. He forgot. The Lord Jesus, Lord God told him. He said in verse 1, he said, come out of your country, your relatives. Lot is his relative. Why did he bring Lot with him? Why? You see, sometimes you shouldn't be too nice. We are too nice as Christians. God tells you something and you're like okay Lord but this very one thing I just cannot let go let's go <laughs> but that petit I'm confia, is going to bring you problems that petit is going to make you miss your, your blessing it's going to make you miss your kingdom that petit is going to make you miss that which God has set apart for you and for you alone amen so we need to be very careful we need to have the spirit of discernment here Amen. We really, really, really need to have the spirit of discernment in the sense that when God calls you, analyze your life when God calls you as well. And ask God, what do I need? What do I need to offload so that I can be light, so that I can be flexible? If you carry on reading Genesis 13, uh, chapter 13, you will see as soon as Lot left, Abraham's life prospered even more than that. So it means Lot was holding him back to the point where he even brought the famine on the t onto that land. Amen. And it is why I like what the Bible says in the New Testament. It says, if your right hand is causing you to sin, what should you do? Cut it off. Cut it off. It is better to go into the kingdom of heaven with one arm than to miss it with both your arms. Cut it off. It's a simple... I, I know it's not simple. I was going to say it's as simple as that. It's not simple. <laughs> you know, it is very difficult but there comes a time where you have to make difficult decisions with the friends that you have, the people that you hang out with, and some things that you keep in your life. Amen. Cut it off. And you will see the blessings of the Lord multiply even far greater than you could have imagined before. Amen. Yes, we praise the Lord for that. And so, in life there are certain situations where, I'm about to finish anyway, in life, there are certain situations where we just can't handle. Amen? We just can't handle. There are certain situations that come into your life and you're like, I can't do this. This is too much for me. I just, I just cannot handle it. Amen? And so you run to your friends, you run to your family, or you run to whoever it is, but they can't help you either. And the reason why they can't help you is not because they are incapable, but it is also because of their imperfections and their flaws. Amen? And that can hold them back. That is exactly what holds them back, in fact, from being a reliable source of help. 
Abraham ran to Egypt. Amen? Egypt here symbolizes the world. Abraham, a man who God called him out of the world to bring him into the kingdom system, he still went back to the world where God was calling him out of. When famine came, that's what he did. Amen? The famine came onto the promised land and the Egyptians were not able to help him. He thought the world was going to be able to help. He thought the world was going to be able to help him again. That's why he went back to the world. But the world was unable to help him. Only God can help you in your difficulties. Only God. It is true. God will use man to bring a solution to your problem. But it is. It does not mean that you have to put your trust in man. Your trust has to be in God above. He knows who he will send in your life to help you in that situation that you are facing. It is not for you to try and go look for men and women to help you. Your role when you have a problem is to go on your knees in your bedroom, cry to God, ask him for help. He's a sovereign God. He loves you. He loves me. He will send somebody. Trust me. I know this. He will send somebody. I've experienced it countless of times. That's why I'm standing here and I'm telling you this. He will send somebody at the right time. He is never late. That one, I can promise you, he is never late. He's always on time, this God that we serve. Amen. He is always on time. So Abraham, despite all these difficulties, he runs to Egypt. Egypt is unable to help him. He comes back to the land. And then I believe Abraham must have had a divine conversation with God where he was like, you know what, Lot, go your way. Circumstances allowed it. Lot's servants and Abraham's servants started fighting. God created a situation there to push Abraham to cut that hand off. Amen. So sometimes when, it is why the world will sometimes say, um, what is it, when it rains it pours. When it rains it pours. I don't know how to translate this in Lingala, but let's just go with the flow. <laughs> No, not that one. <laughs> when it rains, it pours. Uh, anyway, you'll understand it when I go. It means when it rains, it seriously rains. It seriously rains to the point where roads start breaking, houses start getting... So a flood, basically. What am I trying to say here? What I'm trying to say is there was a famine in the land that God promised Abraham, right? There's a famine... Abraham runs to Egypt. It doesn't work out. He gets kicked out of Egypt. <laughs> so he's forced back. <laughs> so God made the circumstances in a point whereby he was forcing Abraham into submission. Only me. Because if Abraham went to Egypt and it worked out, God's sovereignty in Abraham's life would have been compromised. So God forced it through situations. He said, come back here. And then he goes. Calls another. Abraham famine. Him and his relationship with his uh, cousin, um, with his nephew, started breaking down. And he got to the point where Abraham practiced wisdom. He said, "Let's not kill each other here. Pick whichever side you want. I will take whatever other side you didn't pick." Lot looks, he chose the land of Sodom where it was, he saw that the grass was green he's like, I'm going this way, Abraham is like thank you very much, I'm going this way and we know the rest of the story Amen and so, it is the same way with you and I God has given you a promise he's given me a promise Amen, I know what God has told me I don't know what he's told you but I know what he has told me, that's for sure Amen, however I want to tell you that because of our frailties, because of our fears, because of our doubts, we run back to the world every time there is a famine, irrespective of what God has told us. So tonight I want to encourage you. Amen? We forget too often, we forget too quickly that the Lord had said, that he will not fail us he will not leave us and that he is always there with us amen so when difficulties come do not forget the promises of God 
stick with him trust him through his promises that's 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 the that's the theme of our message right trusting god or trusting in the lord's promises or acting in the lord's promises so when difficulties come and everybody's telling you get out of that place or do this do that who will you listen to will you listen to god or will you listen to people amen will you listen to god or will you listen to people people will only give you advice based on what they see they see on the surface only god sees beyond the surface god sees what's deep inside god sees your tomorrow he sees your tomorrow your day after tomorrow he sees a hundred years from you he knows your life better than you know yourself amen so when difficulties come do not give up don't do like abraham i know i'm guilty for that so i'm encouraging all of us together myself included don't do like abraham and run back into egypt you are now a child of the kingdom amen you're a child of the kingdom god has called you to excel i like what my wife said that she said the lord has given you that spirit of excellence god has called you to excel in everything that you do everything that you do why because he's called you out of your country out of your relatives out of your father's house and now you've transitioned into the kingdom of heaven amen and so the very last thing that I want to say is Abraham even though he ran to Egypt for a while the Lord did so so he can come back to where he was meant to be so the Lord made circumstances so that he can come back where he was meant to be amen do not trouble yourself too much if problems come into your life and you're always thinking to yourself why is it always me why is it always me amen to me i always see problems as doors into your next season whenever problems come i can bet you there's a blessing about to come into your life amen and so today i pray in the name of jesus that you may be re-established to where God wants you to be in Jesus name wherever it is you know some people are here in Ireland I don't know why I keep saying this some people are here in Ireland but God has told them you you need to be for instance in Canada but you are here what are you doing here you could be praying in a different church God told you you need to be here. What are you doing in that other church? What are you doing in that other church? So I pray in the name of Jesus. In fact, let us stand. Let's pray right now. I just feel it so strongly in my spirit. Can we begin to pray? Just ask God, Lord, make a way for me that I may be reestablished, that I find my way back to where you want me to be in my life. In Jesus' mighty name, let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord Almighty God, we come before you, for you are the God who reestablishes heavenly Father God. You are the God, heavenly Father God, that created the heavens and the earth by your words and your words alone, heavenly Father. Lord, therefore, tonight, heavenly Father God, we come to pray before you, Lord Almighty God, that you begin to reestablish us, Lord Almighty, that you may bring us back, heavenly Father God, to the place where you want us to be, Lord Almighty God, that you may bring us back, heavenly Father God, bring back our finances, bring back our marriages lord almighty god bring back our children's lives heavenly father lord we pray that you bring back our ministry heavenly father god bring back oh lord almighty god our careers lord almighty god to where you've wanted us to be lord almighty we do not want to depend on the world system we do not want to depend heavenly father god on egypt we do not want to depend on ourselves but we want to totally rely on you heavenly father we want to trust in your promises we want to act in trusting in your promises precious Lord Jesus therefore tonight we pray heavenly Father God that you may make a way for us Lord Almighty God to find our way back Lord Almighty God to where you want us to be in our lives concerning our lives concerning everything pertaining to us precious Lord Jesus we need your heavenly Father God fill us with your wisdom oh Lord Almighty God your word says that 
your word is a is a lamp unto our feet heavenly father god let your word therefore shine before us that we may find our ways back lord almighty god i know we've lost our ways father god and therefore we say we are sorry lord almighty god have mercy on us precious jesus have mercy on us lord almighty god for we have rebelled against you we have forgotten about your promises lord almighty god we have forgotten that word that you gave to us lord almighty god we ran away heavenly father god we ran to egypt lord almighty a place where you did not call us to be Lord Almighty God therefore tonight we're coming back to you Heavenly Father we're coming back to you Lord Almighty God and we pray unto you Lord Almighty that you have mercy on us Lord have mercy on us that we may be reestablished, Lord Almighty have mercy on us Heavenly Father that we may find back our ways Lord Almighty God and it will be for your glory and your glory alone precious Lord in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we so pray Father God thank you Lord Jesus Amen. God bless you. And that's the message I had for you tonight. Thank you. Amen. Have we been blessed? Amen. Have we been blessed? So now it's time for us to bless the Lord with what we have. So if we can prepare our offerings. So if everyone wants to prepare their offerings and prepare what it is they have for the Lord and give to the Lord with joy. Il est le même, il est le même hier aujourd'hui. Yes. Il est le même éternellement. Jésus, il est le même, il est le même hier aujourd'hui. Il est le même éternellement. Il est le même, il est le même hier aujourd'hui. Il est le même éternellement, Jésus. Il est le même, il est le même hier aujourd'hui. Il est le même éternellement. Oh oui, je veux chanter pour Jésus. Il est le roi. Dans ma vie de tous les jours. Il est le roi. Sa victoire m'appartient. Désormais, avec toi, Jésus, je retirerai. Oh oui, je veux crier pour Jésus. Il est le roi. Dans ma vie de tous les jours. Il est le roi. Sa victoire m'appartient. Désormais, avec toi, Jésus, je reviendrai à jamais. Oh, Emma, 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 Emma. Emma, 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 Emma. Yeah. 
Simon to pray for the offerings before we finish. <coughs> Let's pray. To Pambolio Nzambi Nabumoi, to Pambolio Mopesi Makasi, to Pambolio Mopesi Mosolo. Elikia ya baitu ezalaka bobele epanayo Elikia ya ekolo ezalaka bobele epanayo Mopesi mosolo ezalaka bobele yo Mopesi pema ezalaka bobele yo Olubi na biso to tambola na kondima Ata famine ezali yawe to telemi na kondima yawe to ebite yawe ngonga nine tika ina mokili oyo nzambe Meto memeli oyo pesi biso na mkola lelo yawe Olobiba oyo ba pesa ka basanga ka eloko te yawe Lokola toto siyo yawe Oza oblige yawe Ofongo la manini se alo la pona opambo la biso Din manye singna tika yawe okopambo la moko na moko Oyo atosi loba na nzambe Azonga lulenge ayaki tenzambe Paske Nangomba ya golugota Esika wapi yo Osomba ki Povrete na biso Nangomba ya golugota Esika wapi yawe Ofongula ki maninisa ya lula pote Toi pamba manzambe Toye lelo na tango oya suka Na tango oya famine Totali si konstansa mokili o tenzambe Yawe na lula to sengi na yawe o kitana libenga ya moko na moko o kitara mabota na biso mula na ya mapambo li yawe ebeta na kombo na Yesu Masia nzambe ezala bomesa note ezala pe discute yawe to ye apo na kosala mozikite me to ye liboso ya mokeli na mapata na mabele moto o ya sala wolu Oya pesa koltan ebele na mboka kungu To ye li boso na yon zambi Na ki mwobola na biso nzambi To nito zonga bato oba pambo wa manzambi Pambo la biso din mane din notre nzambi Ba oba leli pon ba zanga mosolo yawe Pinjoli lelo Lelo eza la mokolo o nzambi o sinyaki Finansi ya moko na moko E fulu kisama din mane spiritual e signaturel to buki mobola to buki devore o ayaka ko sise moso na biso na kombo na Yesu Masia o bi lang nyos e ko leve po na biso to ko kondane yango na kombo na Yesu Masia papa kombo na e kumbama parce que yonde ozali le maître de l'impossibilité nous te bénissons dans le nom qui n'a jamais échoué c'est le notre de notre Seigneur Jésus-Christ amen Thank you, Papa Simon. Um, Mama Julie, do we have any announcements? <laughs> <laughs>